So welcome, Max. Uh, thank you uh, for agreeing to be interviewed. You are a professional subtitler. So could you explain what is it that you do every day? I offer a number of services, not just subtitling. Um, as a freelancer and as a business, consultation, subtitling, transcription, template making, sub QC, dub QC, and then another kind of QC that shall not be named. That's about it. But mostly subtitling, of course. Yeah. All right. Yes, you've mentioned a couple of different terms. Uh, could we go back to what you were saying and try and explain some of them? Absolutely. So, what, what are like the fundamental terms of subtitling that everybody who's interested in that uh, they should know? Uh, let, let's start maybe with spotting or timing or queuing. What, what is that? Right. So, all those terms mean the same thing, which is setting the in and out at out times of your subtitles. That is when they appear and disappear from the screen. That's what it means. Okay, and how do you do that? How do you make them appear and disappear? Well, it depends, of course, on the software that you use. You usually just press a button and that sets the in time at the video position that it's currently in at. And then another button does the same for the out time. Quite easy. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the software. We'll yeah. go back to the uh, terms in a second. Uh, uh -huh. Do you use a PC-based software or do you work in the cloud or both? Well, I do both because um, I think in today's realities you cannot escape web-based stuff. I have my software for PC, which I use more and more rarely as time progresses. And I use a number of online tools. And going back to terminology, uh, so we've explained the uh, timing of subtitles. And I think uh, when you were answering my first question, uh, you said uh, something about QC. QC. What's that? It stands for quality control, which is something that you do. It basically means proofing. Not proofreading, but proofing, because you can proofread the time codes. So all kinds of things, translation, time codes, segmentation, maybe even some technical stuff, depending on the kind of QC. There are different kinds, subtitling, dubbing, some more types. And yeah, basically, it's another pair of fresh eyes looking at your translation, making sure no problems, no issues come through. All right. Um, uh, anything else there? Uh, QC, uh, timing. Uh, you mentioned uh, templates. What is a template? Right. So a template is a subti subtitle file for multilingual projects. It doesn't have to be English. Some people think that it has to be English. No. But usually it is. So when you translate from one language into like 30, Usually, you will not be able to find people working in specific language combinations between, if it's not English. That's one use of templates. So you, it's easier to find people working for, from English to languages than from another language to those languages. Then you have this English template. Also, it helps to speed up work for companies. That's something they like doing. As translators, we are not fond of them, but if they're created to a high professional standard. Uh -huh. Why are you not fond them? of them? Because many companies think that, well, if you do that, then you save the translator time and you have to pay less. Not have, you can pay less. That's one problem. And the other problem also is many companies do not trust the subtitlers that they should adapt this template for their language. So what they do is they say, you cannot change the template, please don't touch it, mm -hmm. just the translation. So it's locked. Yes. And that's also something, it's just, it limits your creativity, I guess. People don't like that. All right. Any other term that um, a uh, well, person who is interested in subtitling should know? There are so many terms. So many terms. So many terms. Okay. Let me ask this. Uh, how about uh, the refrigerator? Oh, um. Originator. It's a slang term for uh, originator. Originator is a web-based tool for subtitling used for Netflix projects. It's pretty good, but you know, those online tools, they look kind of look the same, more or less. So it's just one of them. It's nice. That's about it. Uh -huh. And I suppose they all evolve over time. So they do. They do. They become better, faster. They get new functionality from time to time. Yes, there's that. 
All oh, right, um, and I uh, didn't ask you um, whether you work for, uh, what your language combinations are, right? And uh, whether you work for local companies or for international companies? Well, I only work with really in one language pair, English to Russian. I rarely am asked to do Russian to English, of course, I always not notify the person asking that, but hey, that's not really professional, but sometimes there's no other way around. I only work for international companies. I left the Russian market five years ago because we had an economy crisis, so I never looked back. I think international clients pay better, they treat you better compared to the Russian ones, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, and some people would say uh, Russia is not really a subtitling country, so oh, how, no. come, how come you do subtitling into Russian? Well, that's a long story. I started some nine to ten years ago um, when one of my clients asked me to create subtitles. It was around the time YouTube just appeared and so they had these YouTube videos they wanted to subtitle. Dubbing is much more expensive. They wanted to save because money. Because dubbing is much more popular in Russia, right? It is, but then you can save money but by subtitling, especially if you're not a big business or if you are a hobbyist or something like that, which was the case for me. There was this one ex uh, rich person who wanted to pursue their passion about that one uh, personality. So then I started looking into things. There was nothing. Just all dubbing, dubbing, dubbing. Nothing in Russian. I had to find information by small bits, experiment with different tools available back in the day. There was almost nothing. So it was like a self-taught journey to Basically, learn about yes. subtitling. So how did you learn? What sources did you use? How can one well, learn to be a subtitler? So, but back, back in the day, I had to just do it myself and try and find out what works and what doesn't. Then I was able to afford books by Jorge, by Jan, I found Just Trans, I found other small things like that um, set of European subtitling standards by... Code of good subtitling practice, you mean? That, that no, 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 that's not what I mean. I, that one, yes, but also by this Greek person, Karamitro... Oh, Fotios Karamitro. Yes. yes, very nice. And so those kinds of things that you, you find here, find here, apply that knowledge to your work, see if it works for your language. So you didn't get any instructions from the uh, company? There were no instructions. We actually, the first set of subtitling standards for Russian that I know of was Netflix. Pretty recently, before that we had nothing. That they, that they know at least, not, not, not anything in open access. And is, is it good to have instructions and standards? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, Russia is a huge country. You need everyone to be on the same page. You need, because it's just, it's regional, it's local. Um, I, from what I've heard, they're working on actual national standards in Russia right now for subtitling and hope that succeeds. It's a little bit complicated. Russia is bureaucratic, but yeah, there's that. From your perspective, um, is it a nice life? Is it a nice job to be a subtitler? Would you recommend it? Well, it is, but you have to have some specific characteristics to you. All right, so, so what, what are these to, characteristics? You have to have that power to not give up. What, what do you mean? I mean that subtitling and just audiovisual translation is a harsh mistress. You, you need you need to know how to market yourself. You need to keep pushing, to improving, to, to prove yourself. Maybe create your business, maybe try to set up some profile on a freelancing platform. Just just do something, something, something. These just, are like personal skills, not really yes. subtitling skills, But right? you see, in this day and age, in 2019, learning the theoretical part and even practicing it's pretty simple. We have some information now. So we have people, but then how do you find clients? How do you prove that you, are, you, you have what it takes to them? How do you prove that you can dis deliver a good kind of work, a job? All right. And what, what's uh, um, your competitive advantage? Uh, or maybe I should ask uh, about your blog, right? I know we have a blog about something. I do have. Well, that's not my competitive adma advantage. I think my advantage is that I started very early when there was almost no one and got into this privileged position of being one of the most known Russian subtitlers. And so people just know me. 
to ask you for an autograph. <laughs> well, not that, but <laughs> finding projects is easy when you're in that position of being well known. Um, as far as blog, I think it has helped. Maybe not in work, but in pursuing personal things that I think that I find fun and that I'm passionate about getting to know you, other people like Jorge and Jan and Pablo and many other people who I yeah, like. Yeah, we're like one big audiovisual translation family, right? I think so. Uh, okay, uh, one final question maybe. Um, what skills do you think are necessary uh, to be a subtitler? Not personal skills, but what do you need to have in you to be a good subtitler? Definitely attention to detail. Definitely um, focus, being able to focus on something for a long period of time. I think another very important skill in this day and age is tech savviness. You need to be able to be good with software because there are new things appearing all the time. You need to keep abreast of this and be able to use it to your advantage and also automate things maybe with some hardware. We have some new types of mice and keyboards and all kinds of things. So you need that as well. All right, perfect. So maybe uh, we could uh, give people the address of your uh, blog uh, yeah. so they can, uh, they can uh, look it up. Uh, what, uh, where can they find it? What's the name of the blog? Well, the website is md-subs.com and there at the top there is this menu and it says blog and you click on it and you have the blog. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Max. You're welcome. Thank you. Really appreciate that.